so that these two worlds kind of this does the desire to do to tell to kind of and explore and my own curiosity about who Norman Jewison is. I got to meet him uh, several occasions and he was so supportive of my work and almost like a mentor. But I was curious, you know, I have this, this idea that you don't really know someone until you make a documentary about them. And uh, fortunately, I was able to capture a, a long in-depth interview with Norman that you saw in the film, The Spine of the Film, is a documentary I shot with him in 2016. The first interview that I shot specifically for this documentary was with Topol uh, in 2009. After seeing in 2009 his farewell tour of Fiddler on the Roof in Los Angeles, I was particularly uh, moved by the audience was made up of, of, of a very diverse group of ethnic backgrounds. And I thought, man, this move, this this play speaks to the souls of so many people from different walks of life, and 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 then through making this film, it was an opportunity to investigate well, what was Norman Jewison's vision, and how did he interpret Broadway production, and who were his team members, and 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 how did they how did they make the film? It's interesting how the movie is about Hitler, but it is also very much about Norman. Did you know from the beginning that uh, he was going to be such a huge part of this film? Not from the beginning, because in 2009, when I started shooting interviews, I was kind of really open to uh, kind of a triptych of port three portraits. I was interested very specifically in Shalom Aleichem, uh, Norman's story, and and Topol's story, or the incarnations of different tevias throughout the history of the make. And, and, and I'm not working full time on this documentary until really the start of the pandemic. But I all, had already interviewed in depth Topol, Norman Jewison, and Sheldon Harnick, and Robert Boyle, and, and um, experts about Shalom Aleichem. But during that time, while I was shooting all these different interviews, uh, two other beautiful films came out. In 2011, a documentary came out called Shalom Aleichem, Laughing in the Dark. And, and that, um, uh, and then in 2019, uh, a film came out called Fiddler, Miracle of Miracles, which is about the stage play specifically and its impact today, cultural impact that continues on today, mainly on stage and you know, all over the world and the varying incarnations of that. So because those two films had already come out, that in a way sort of freed me to just kind of focus, kind of uh, focus on, uh, on Norman's story. And then as I was sort of going deeper into that story uh, in May of 2021, I had the opportunity to interview the three actresses. And I found a second story that I found really important to tell about their journey to Fiddler and kind of, kind of as as you heard just now, this, um, as as uh, the, the great film critic Kenny Turan says at the end of the film, you know that it they this this movie wasn't a launching pad for anyone, and and really the casting was to find three actresses who could play these village girls, these daughters. And it wasn't about launching the, the launching careers. It was really about creating this universe, and um, and so you know, and and so my 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 curiosity was, well, let's let's kind of do a, an X-ray of Fiddler on the Roof, and and I was so glad to have in my archive the interviews with Robert Boyle that I conducted in two thousand, the interviews with Jewison that I conducted in two thousand. And then later, along with the daughters, to interview uh, in 2021, uh, John Williams was amazing to sort of investigate his process and his thoughts. And also the audio we have in the film of cinematographer Ozzy Morris, who was also able to sort of articulate how they found the look, which I think contributes. So I think that collectively, this sort of collective uh, brilliant vision of all these different artists, actors in front of the camera, behind the camera, the designers, the storyboard artists, and, and of course, Norman Jewison, the grand conductor of it all. I think that that uh, I was very happy to, to sort of land on that approach to the story. 
there are lots of making of uh, features on DVDs and so forth, you know, lots of making of stories. But how do you take um, all these elements that one is kind of used to uh, seeing and make it into a film itself? Like, what, in your opinion, like, what are Absolutely. those? It's a great question. It's a really great question. Because I use a, a stylistically and aesthetically, my documentaries um, are what you what one would call a talking heads documentary. You know, we just you, you frame your 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 speaker, and 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 you engage with them. And what I try to do is give breathing room in the stories and in the editing, and in the pacing of it to really get inside the characters' hearts and minds. They are not just talking heads, they're real three-dimensional people. Uh, and I give them, and I hope to, to capture in that small interview, their humanity, their humanness in a way. And um, to really give them the, the, the opportunity to share something from their soul. And I gotta say that I'm so pleased that Michelle Marsh and Neva Small and Rosalind Harris had uh, participated and agreed during this, you know, during the pandemic, which was a, there was that window right before Delta that hit the first variant. We were able to go to, to I was able to shoot these interviews. Um, and I feel like that the, in the you know, what, what else separates the, the, the experience of watching this film? You know the it's a it's a it's it's um I can say that the creative process was in looking at my interview with Norman from two that the spine of the film from 2016 when he says at the end of the interview I found myself making Fiddler on the Roof I challenged myself and my team uh, to see if we could create that arc. Can we find, what does that mean? You know, I found myself, what does it mean? And what does it mean to be an artist, a storyteller? What are the, what are the life experiences? You know, so the dramatic construction or the narrative construction of this documentary uh, is designed to, to, to investigate and to better understand what it means to be an artist, a storyteller, uh, and how our, our life experiences inform our art. In your career, and especially in this movie, you seem to have such an appreciation for all the people involved in the filmmaking process and how mm -hmm. each individual person can bring something to the production. Um, in studying the making of this film, who are some of the people other than you that you feel make the greatest contribution to this classic? In, in studying this film, who do I feel? One more time. Other individuals besides Norman. Made the greatest contribution. Yeah, absolutely. Well, some of the it's a great question. Thank you. Know, some of the 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 choreographer, you know, the choreographer was ninety plus year. I couldn't find him. I could not interview the choreographer uh, Abbott, but but I would have loved to talk with him and see how because he worked on the Broadway play and the musical of uh, film version. So that would have been kind of amazing to to talk with him. But I think that this kind of the, the core team that created the visual structure of the of Fiddler on the Roof includes from the very beginning, Norman calls up Robert Boyle. Now, Robert Boyle had worked with Norman on, on before that on the Russians are coming, the Thomas Crown Affair, Gailey Gailey. So they already had a language and a, an appreciation for creating worlds where human beings exist, right? So we, we hear Bob talking in a way that we don't really hear cinema artists talking so much today in contemporary film. There really, there's an attention to the detail uh, that Robert Boyle brought, you know? Uh, and, and, uh, so this is 1971. I think he had before that done in Cold Blood and long before that, the Hitchcock pictures. So the attention to detail that Robert Boyle provides and and then the man on Lincoln's nose, my documentary from twenty years ago, Norman says, you know, he he gets under your skin, and he and and he, and really informs the director, the production designer, a great production designer that creates these worlds. And Bob Boyle had a great team of storyboard artists. We saw 
uh, uh, Mentor Hubner's storyboards in, in the documentary. And uh, we saw Harold Michelson's uh, key art, creating the barn and all that. And I was so interested to hear from, from, from John Williams how he works with the production designer. Do we add two extra steps you know, to, the, to the barn ladder so we could hit those cues in the, in the, in the music? Uh, so I think what John Williams brought from the very beginning, he was at that point, not the John Williams that we know and love of Star Wars that came shortly after, but he was there uh accompanying norman during the uh the auditions and so he was also using his imagination and his hearing and then the visual structure so his his music is informing the visual structure we have robert boyle we talked about the production designer the storyboard artist and then oswald morris uh who's who's a seasoned cinematographer um a British cinematographer had shot uh, several musicals before Fiddler uh, and uh, had, you know, what we heard him talking about how he developed the look of Fiddler on the Roof. And I think that that contribution of creating that kind of um, rustic brown tones and that earthy feeling to it and those long wide shots, you know, they weren't afraid of those. Today, you, they, 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 you have a long shot and either it's a helicopter shot, a drone shot, or it cuts almost immediately to something else. But, the, but those compositions of, at the train station when Huddle is saying goodbye to, to Tevya, uh, to her father, at the end when the train goes by, is so beautiful. And I think that those were designed in the storyboarding by Robert Boyle and Mentor Hubner and, 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 and imagined also by Norman Jewison. I think Norman's, you know, it's talked about in the documentary, but his background in musical theater, in musical theater and musical television, informed not just Fiddler on the Roof, but even a, 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 a very different film like uh, In the Heat of the Night, with working with Haskell Wexler, the cinematographer, who was a gritty documentary realism, he informed how they zoomed the camera onto a bridge while a character is running across in the heat of the night. But I think that. The, the visual structure of Fiddler on the Roof is beautiful. And I think that's what makes it, partly what makes it a timeless masterpiece. I'm glad you mentioned John Williams because a uh, huge John Williams fan. I, I don't think I've ever seen anyone in any documentary really talk about the process of making a musical and the mm -hmm. manner in which he did. That was really very informative. Like you said, like the way he was able to explain and he would have to communicate with the director, with the actors to know the timing of everything and also be aware of like what the camera was going to be doing at different points. It seemed like he really played a very big role in that capacity. I agree, yeah, absolutely. And not to mention, you know, his, you know, uh, just his appreciation for the different styles of Jewish music, a Yiddish music, and this and a more of an Eastern style and influence. I mean, it's uh, recently, I don't have it here, but the 50th anniversary uh, three CD set of Fiddler on the Roof came, of the, came out. They re remastered John Williams' original score. And I've been enjoying, I have it in the car. And it's just like such a, <laughs> his grand vision for the, you know, and then I, then I kind of counter, counter, you know, a B John Williams version with the original Broadway score, which is like four instruments, you know, and, uh, but what, there's something else I want to say about the experience of watching Fiddle on the movie as a movie versus the play. And I was thinking about all that detail and research and construction that went into creating this world of Anatevka. And I think that a great work of cinema, including today, one feels the sense of place and the locations and the objects in those locations, almost like another character. They're, 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 they're not just there as a, as, a, as, a, you know, as a digital backdrop. This is the real tangible, you feel the dirt in your hands and you and the audience you live with those characters in Anna Tevka. And when they sing at the end of the film, Anna Tevka, and you see those shots of people leaving Anna Tevka, 
you're with them on a whole other level. You're with those characters as an audience because of the cinematic experience. And that was Norman's genius. That was his vision from the very beginning to, to create, to shoot in Eastern Europe. And, um, and uh, I, I think that's, especially today with what's happening in the world and those scenes of the, of the exodus, it's just so powerful. And I, I think Norman Jewison and his team did a, a beautiful job. It's funny that you mentioned that. Two more quick questions, then I'll open it up to the audience. You mentioned all the events going on in the world right now. Um, with everything going on, what do you think Fiddler on the Roof has to say to today's audiences that's still so relevant? I think it says that we need to know our past in order to prepare for the future. You know, I think that goes for any and anything and everything. And I didn't, in a million years, didn't think about this situation making Fiddler's journey to the big screen. But when I saw it for the first time with an audience uh, a week ago, that hit me hard. And um, and it and what else does it say? I I think that it 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 preserves the memory. It preserves the past in a way that. I think was very important for Jerome Robbins, the director of the Broadway production, who wanted to kind of, who, who at the age of six visited Poland for the first time, where he, I think where his family comes from and, and the creators of the Broadway production, you know, Sheldon and, and Jerry Bach and, 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 and uh, Joe Stein, who wrote both the Broadway play book and the screenplay. I think that they did want to preserve something about, I think the, one of the original titles of the, of the Broadway production was Where Does Papa, Where Papa Comes From. And that was for me also going back to what I shared with you, seeing Fiddler for the first time and seeing that photo literally side by side of my great grandparents. I also had that, that, that interest to preserve some aspect of 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 that her cultural heritage and it seems like you have a great fondness for norman i was wondering uh from looking at his life and at his work uh have you been influenced at all in terms of your directing career by him yeah i have because um i think that that um what I find meaningful and important in, in what I do, which are nonfiction feature documentaries and short documentaries as well, is rooting it in the human experience and the humanization of the characters and, and, and that empathy that I learned from Norman and Bob Boyle too. Uh, that it is about the people, you know, it's funny to hear him talk about the Crown of Thomas Crown Affair, one of the, the style over substance movie, right? But even with the Thomas Crown Affair, Norman and Bob can talk for hours about the humanity of this Thomas Crown character and what it means, you know. But uh, certainly I, I, I appreciate and have continued to uh, be inspired by the, 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 the search for what it means to be human. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.